In this recording, we look at setting up the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis when doing a one sample hypothesis test for the mean. So we have a single sample of data and we're wanting to use the mean of the sample to see whether we have evidence against what's called a null hypothesis, which is giving some fixed number as the possible value of the population mean. So let's have a look at a couple of examples of how we set this up. And here we're not going to go through the whole hypothesis testing process. We're going to simply look at how to write down the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis for a couple of scenarios. And always in a hypothesis test, the null hypothesis is that there is no difference in means. In other words, the mean of the population the sample was drawn from is equal to some specific number that we're looking at. While the alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference in means. In other words, that's saying the mean of the population the sample was drawn from is greater than some specific number, less than some specific number, or not equal to some specific number. And which of those is the case will depend on the wording of the question being investigated. So let's have a look at a couple of examples. In our first example, we're told that in 2012, the average number of customers visiting a particular store per day was 86. So that is actually a fixed population mean for 2012. At the end of the year, a rival company set up a large shop nearby that sold similar products. We want to investigate whether the average number of customers visiting the store per day has decreased in 2013. Now ideally, it will be good if the store could get a population mean, that is data on the number of people in the store every day in 2013. But suppose that the best they could do was to gather a data for a random sample of days, then a hypothesis testing approach would be appropriate. So let's think about what our hypotheses would be. First of all in words and then in symbols. And the null hypothesis, so notice that's written H0 with a colon after that. Null hypothesis would say that there had been no change in the average number of customers visiting the store each year. In other words, a null hypothesis would say that the average number of customers visiting the store in 2013 is the same as in 2012. So that's our hypothesis of no change. While the alternative hypothesis would be that there has been some change. And in particular, the store are interested in whether there has been a decrease. Therefore, H1 would say the average number of customers visiting the store per day in 2013 is lower than in 2012. So how would we write these in symbols? Well according to the null hypothesis in 2013 the population mean mu is still the same as the previous year and in the previous year in 2012 it was 86 therefore H0 would say mu is still equal to 86, while H1, hypothesis of a decrease, that would be saying mu is less than 86. And when you have H1 in this form, mu less than 86, you're just looking at a possibility in one direction. And similarly, if we had mu greater than some number for H1, again, we'd just be looking at one of the two possibilities for the direction of the difference. And for that reason, a hypothesis test of this type is sometimes referred to as a one-tailed or a directional hypothesis test. Let's have a look at a second example of setting up hypotheses. Heights of a particular population of young women were found to be normally distributed with mean mu equals 160 centimetres. We want to investigate whether the mean height of women who play professional sport is different from this value. 
So once again we could write it out in words if we wanted to. Here I'll just say it in words and we'll go straight to the symbols. H0 again says no difference in means. So in this case H0 would be that the true mean height of young women who play sport is the same as the true mean height of the population of young women we're looking at there. In other words it would say that the true mean height of young women who play sport professionally is equal to 160. So that would be mu equals 160. H1, we need to look at the wording of the question. Here it is simply asking whether the mean height of young women who pay professional sport is different from this value. So here H1 would be mu is different to 160, which is written mu not equal to 160. And you'll notice here we're allowing for the possibility in both of the possible directions. That is, we're allowing for the fact that the height of the young women playing professional sport might be greater than 160, or the true mean height might be less than 160. So when you're allowing for a difference in either direction, and thus getting mu not equal to some value, that is an example of a non-directional or two-tailed hypothesis test. So these are some introductory examples to get you used to setting up hypotheses based on the wording of the question.